Welcome to another edition of the We'll Just Agree. The Disagree Podcast. I am Ryan Lee. And I am Beyonce Fox. Happy 2022, Ryan. 2022. Yes. The, first the first episode edition. of 2022. Yeah, I'm so excited. How's the new year been treating you so far? We're, what, about two weeks in? Yep, two weeks in, and I'm two weeks been tried. I'm tired already. <laughs> I'm ready. This is ghetto. 2022 is ghetto already. Not I don't know. Two weeks tried. I don't want to go back to 21. I don't know what 23 has, but 2022 is ghetto, and I'm over it. Already, Ryan. Already. In the first couple of weeks, stop. Already, Ryan. Already. You see, what happened to being grateful? You see, for I'm leaning. Like- you see, I am leaning back and forth because that's just what my grandma used to do, and I feel like I'm calling on the name of Jesus. Like they say, when you moan, they don't know what you're talking oh. about. <laughs> I love it. Well, it's good to see you in the new year. I hadn't seen you for a while. Because you know, in December, I take half the month off, baby, and do what I got to do. And it was we, beautiful. I would talk to Beyonce every other day. She would give me a full recap of her life because Beyonce was doing this, 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 and that. And then I was traveling. So then we didn't really get to talk like that. But happy new year, B. Yes, it's a Thank new you. year. We are back. I'm excited. I feel like this podcast has so much in store this yeah. year. Uh, we'll hit our one year. Yes, uh, coming up soon. It's gonna be fun. Um, mm-hmm. Me and Beyonce have talked about a lot more guests coming on this year. Yeah, yep. so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens in 2022. But how's it been for you? Two weeks in, how have you been? Oh, just awesome. You know, uh, not to sound all corny and religious like I usually sound to most people, but that's okay. I am just grateful for another day of life. Seriously, yeah. it's been good. It's just yeah. been flat. You know what I mean? Nothing mm-hmm. extravagant yet. And the best is yet to come. You know, I had a, um, um, I don't really celebrate birthdays, but I had a birthday late December and then also the major holidays. And uh, all of that was just thwarted with the virus and the cancellation of flights and stuff. So I just woke up one morning and I said, oh, I'm going to lay in bed. I'm not going to go. So I feel like, by me postponing all of that that I had planned, it's going to huh. be even bigger and better when I decide to go again. So I'm good. In I'm that afraid the way 2022 is going so far that it's going mm-hmm. to be another 2021 of just like flat. No, don't confess that. No. I'm not confessing it, but I'm afraid. I told you I've been tried in two weeks. Tried. <laughs> it's going to be okay, Ryan. Trust me. It's going to even out. You know, we always have rocky starts at the beginning of the year. Uh I don't know if you've noticed that. There's always like some major event. Have you noticed all the celebrity deaths in the last Uh few weeks, month? It's kind of- Oh my goodness. It seems like every year starts off with stuff that just kind of shocks us. Uh, Of course, Betty White passed away. That started like right at the new year. What was Betty White? Like at the end of 2021? She was like, I want to say- literally the end of 2021 yeah, like, like she didn't even make it to 2022 the 31st yeah yeah <laughs> betty white city yeah. portier yeah. Uh, who else uh bob, bob Saget, recently. it looks like whoa a lot but yeah for the most part living each day as it comes and just hoping for the best yeah bob Saget. i gotta say that one kind of hit home because for me yeah. full house was one of my favorite shows growing up mm, mr I- town I put it on the level of Bill Cosby. Okay. I mean, I watched Full House, but I don't think I was ever into it that much. But yeah, he seemed like a really good guy. And gosh, what's crazy is that he had just been on stage doing stand up like a before. day or two prior to that. Yeah. That's just, woo. Yeah. Oh, boy. Some things I will say I'm excited for, and not to change the subject, may they all rest in peace. And even yes. the ones that we forgot to name. But yes. something that I am looking forward to in the new year two things. One, Kanye West documentary coming out to Netflix and Janet Jackson coming to Lifetime. I think both of those are about to be epic. I'm so looking forward to both. And you know, I don't watch TV like that. I watch the news and I watch entertainment shows, but I rarely sit down and just sit there and watch a documentary. But baby, that night I will be front and center glued to the couch and I will not move. For both. Janet Jackson... Janet looks like she's really about to be talking about some things. Oh, is she? Especially yeah. that whole nipple gate situation and all that. She even in the trailer. Which I'm over. Well, that kind of damaged her career. So it means a lot to her. You know what I mean? Uh, so I can yeah. see her wanting to talk about that. And even in the most recent trailer that was released, 
she even uh, talked, spoke on those allegations of Big Brother Mike saying how she was guilty by association. Mm. So yeah, this is gonna be deep and it's a two-parter. Yeah. Lifetime and A&E. So, and you know, back in the day, I thought I was Janet Jackson. <laughs> seriously to this day still got the moves to all her videos all of that so baby when i tell you i will be front and center i cannot even wait okay but what do you mean it's two parts lifetime and a and e i guess it's a two-part documentary so i guess one part's gonna air on lifetime and the other on a and e i don't know i'm a little confused about that too but it's airing on both so i thought you said a m e like we can go to the church and watch it no a and e Arts and Entertainment Channel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so far so good. 2022 is uh, working out okay. Spent a little money over the holidays and stuff. You know, of course, I got to hit a mall or two here and there and pick up something. Nothing I, major. I challenge you. Do not shop. Do not go into. Do not go into any retail stores. Do not order nothing online. That's easy for the next three months oh that's real easy you know why i gotta pay all those bills that i just spent over the holidays so that's easy yeah that that's very easy you can save for the next six months and i'll be like okay so for the next six months you're not shopping at all even if somebody sends you something at all wow it's not in the budget can't do it Mm -mm. Wow. Mm -mm. so that's easy you know i like retail that's easy to do and see, I knew you were going to be like six months, three months. Wow. Well, it's going to take me that long to pay off what I bought over the holidays. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that's the bigger issue. What did you buy over the holidays, B? What do most women buy? Three things, Ryan. You bought a purse. You bought jewelry. And you bought some hair. <laughs> Not hair. That's what yeah. most mo- no. most women buy some hair. That's true, but no. Shoes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Of all people, me and you don't bring up shoes. I didn't, think, I didn't even think of shoes. We just had that conversation earlier about me and the shoe thing. I didn't even think about shoes. Okay, yeah, now no, what, that was good. Now what 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 types and kinds did you buy that is costing you to pay the bills in 2020? What are we going to be talking about on the podcast today? What did you buy? At- what are we going to be talking about on the podcast today? Retail, right? Retail. I think we need to just go ahead and get into it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Speaking of shopping and yeah. retail and all this stuff Ooh. over the holidays, man, you yeah. know I'm a shopper, Ryan. You know that I already. Know. <laughs> So you know this has messed me up. Man, joining us now is my girl. She is a former member of the Mag Mile Association and a former manager of one of the flagship stores wow. on Michigan Avenue. Uh, mm-hmm. Former manager of one of those stores. And now you're an events manager at 345 Art Gallery in Garfield right. Park. It's my yes. girl, Charmaine Garfield. Hey! What's up, what's up? Hey. <laughs> Thank you all wow. for having me. It's the vibe for me, B. It's the Thank energy so for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> She's well, it was an invitation for me. Hello. <laughs> yes, Yes. We'll just agree to disagree podcast. And Shar, you noticed about me too, girl. How many times did I say in that short story you used to manage? Oh my God. And no, you how you used to tell me, stop t- emailing me and texting me stuff. Yes, I'm gonna go Ryan, this girl was at a store one day. And when I tell you, Charmaine emailed me a picture of a huge pink and green yes, girl, Gucci star. star. Yes. Gucci. <laughs> Yeah, a shawl, a scarf. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. said, "B, when I saw this, it was all you." All right. I'm the one that be at work that be like, "Beyonce, <laughs> stop going to the magnificent <laughs> mile. You don't need nothing. You just went." The-. And she'd be like, "No, but look, they sent me a picture, and they just got." Yeah, I, know. Like, I don't care. Sorry, that was me. <laughs> That's That's what yes. did I do two days later? I went to the. He was like, "I went and bought it." I own it. Bought the thing. <laughs> so Charmaine, I'm gonna need you to stop sending me pictures. Stop. Yeah. Doing it. Well, you know, okay. hey, it, I, when I when I'm when I feel it in that moment, 
I don't mess around. I'm like, if she don't have this scarf right now, I love <laughs> it's like, I love it. I you love know, it, it was okay, very so let's Beyonce. Talk about, let's talk about some of these smash and grabs uh, while we're on the subject of retail. It, it really sure. disturbs me. And you used to work on the Magnificent mm -hmm. Mile. And I'm Absolutely. sure you may have been privy to maybe some of the stuff that's been going on. But girl, this is really a crisis. And it's not just happening here in Chicago. There have been smash and grabs all over the United States recently. Mm -hmm. But it seems mm -hmm. like here in Chicago, they're happening every week. Well, yeah, just last week, twice at Burberry. One week, twice. You know, so I mean, I just really feel for the people that work there. I mean, you know, to go to work with that kind of anxiety and that kind of, you know, fear of, <laughs> You don't know if it's going to happen to your store or if it's going to happen next door. You know, you just you're in a danger zone almost wow. when mm -hmm. Michigan Avenue was sacred. I mean, us growing up, you know, there was it was a, tr a field trip, a family yes. field trip. Yes. I mean, yes. go yes. on Michigan Avenue and get some popcorn and go to the water tower, or the John Hancock. Now it's 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 to the point where we may end up seeing our high end businesses, you know, leave. And, and, and now it's, it'll just be a desert of like where you can't go and enjoy a, a day of it, you know, where you make it like a whole family fun outing where you're shopping and you're having lunch or dinner. I mean, it's almost like people are afraid and apprehensive to go downtown. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I just really feel for the workers that, that have to, you know, deal with that as they're working and having to be nice and give this excellent customer service. And, you know, without thinking about that in the back of their mind, when they see a prototype come in the store, you know, mm -hmm. that's another thing you're, you're, you're profiling, you know, and not on purpose, but you're, you're in fear. Like you don't know. And it's, yeah. it's just sad, you know, and I, like, I, like I said, Michigan Avenue has always been sacred ground growing up in Chicago. It always has been just like our, you know, tourist highlight. I mean, it's, it's where the our money really generates you know, with our tourism and things like that. So, I mean, for that to be in jeopardy because of people that don't want to work for it, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. And yeah. I was going to breakfast the other day and I rolled by the Burberry to get to my location and it was fully empty. There was not one piece of merchandise mm -hmm. in the store. So I don't yeah. know, does that, <laughs> does that mean it's an investigation? Does that mean the store is closing? Because that Burberry on Michigan Avenue, it just opened within like the last, what, five, six, seven years, maybe? Yeah, it's, it, it, to me, I feel like it's still fairly new. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, what I've, what I've kind of heard is that they're by appointment only. Yeah. Wow. And there are only X amount of people allowed in the store. You're yeah. buzzed in. I mean, it is like, you know, Fort Knox to get up in there now. When it's like, mm -hmm. come on, a tourist comes to Chicago, wants to shop at Burberry. You know, they're not going to deal with that. You right. know, yeah, and I guess we can have you as, as, as you know, people that live here. So. And I guess I would like to ask you, Charmaine, because you've been in the retail position of you saw how mm -hmm. it probably can affect sales. How does that work Absolutely. when Burberry cannot have the amount of people that it normally would have in there because this could happen? How does that affect sales on Michigan Ave, where this is supposed to be where they're making all the money, you know, in the city? Well, it really directly is the volume will we'll start to decline. And then um, people just, I mean, the media, you know, letting us know on one hand, but it also puts fear into our consumers. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what's going to end up happening is maybe the online sales will kick up mm. as opposed to being in a store. Because again, you have to realize that there have been incidents where people have been in the store yeah. And the, they come in and they, you know, do their thing and they leave. So as a customer, you're, you're just as, you know, in jeopardy when you, when you go in the store nowadays as, as an employee. Right. And so mm -hmm. I, I saw a video at Oak Brook Louis Vuitton and it was like a normal Saturday afternoon. And then here come 14, you know, guys come in and, and, and they clean it out. And they, can you imagine being in the store shopping and you're like, it's, oh, no. it's, it can good. be fearful. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. So, yeah. So I believe that it will start with the volume and the traffic. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you'll see the, the, the first decline in like just sales. And then, you know, hopefully online will be able to pad that or people will just kind of like maybe wait it out a little bit and kind of let, you know, situations or whatever the motivation behind all of the, 
So, I mean, I, I don't feel like it's going under the protest umbrella anymore because, you know, it's one thing to be out there to make a statement yeah. and to protest something that is worth a cause, but we all know that that's not the case. Absolutely. This is, this is merely robbery. Yeah. <laughs> so, At this point. Yeah. At this point, it's just robbery, you know. And what gets me and is that I, it's happening so often. I just oh can't God. fathom <laughs> the fact that this, this is on the news, seriously, once, twice, three times a month. Mm -hmm. And these people aren't getting caught. I, I, no, I don't you know. I, I feel like, you know, um, copycat is real heavy in this situation. Yeah. I feel like um, people that that have that mentality to, to, to have the balls to do that, they, they want to do it better than the last person did it. Oh, they hit Burberry, yeah. oh, I'm going to Canada Goose. Oh, they hit mm -hmm. Canada Goose, I'm going to Moose. You know, like, so now it's about notoriety and, and, and what you can do and what you'll, you'll see the results on the news. Like, yeah, you know, like it, it's almost gratifying to them. Grossly mm -hmm. gratifying, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's I tell you. It's unfortunate because I even find myself now shopping and I'm kind of like looking around, which I was like that before. But I feel like now mm -hmm. really kind of like one thing I think we learn is that whether it's uh, on Michigan, whether it's in Oak Brook, whether it's it can happen anywhere, you know, anywhere. You the malls that were safe, of course, allegedly. Mm -hmm. But now it's like it can happen anywhere. So I do find myself like. Let me go maybe mm -hmm. during the morning thinking that it's not going to be a lot of traffic or let mm -hmm. me just go online now. And mm -hmm. I'm not an online mm -hmm. shopper, but the way stores are getting hit left after right. And it seems like no one's getting caught for it. You know, mm -hmm. you got to do what you got to do now. But that safety component, I feel like is out the door. And Charmaine, I've done retail for a few stores and mm -hmm. I can't imagine going to work fearful while I'm just trying to fix clothes or fix shoes and not knowing if you could be the next store to get hit. And as you know, you know, we're trained, don't go after them. You know, you let them get what they mm -hmm. want because at the end of the day, you're just mm -hmm. here to work. But yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. what you don't know what level these people can come in at. So it's just, it's sad that we have to live in this almost fear. And yeah, what makes and me nervous is the fact that when I go into a Neiman Marcus on Michigan Avenue, mm. I have to walk past six men who are standing six foot five, weighing about 350 pounds with wow. like guns everywhere wow. on their waist. Wow. That's not wow. normal. No. I shouldn't have to walk into a store, especially a luxury retailer, yeah. and have to mm -hmm. walk past that just to get to the shoe section or the handbag section. That's intimidating mm -hmm. to me. Do I feel a little safer? Yes. But why is that even necessary? And that's the state of the world that we're living in. Mm -hmm. If you go on Michigan mm -hmm. Avenue right now, every store, when you walk through the door, has these people with these big old guns and they're ready. They're on the ready. I hate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. sad. I hate that. Well, it just, it also is, it, 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 it gives us like a little smudge of like, you know, we can't handle our, we can't get our city together. You know, right. it's a bad look for Chicago as a whole, right. you know, because like B said earlier, it's happening across the country, but it's like, we, we have seen it in, you know, in the crazy numbers where it's like, ah, can we get this handled? Can, can we really do something about this? Like, yeah. or is this just going to be the norm? It's going to be hey, it may be a smash and grab. It may not be. You know, mm -hmm. and, and like I said before, Michigan Avenue used to be kind of, you know, off the arts, you know, untouchable. And, you know, I yeah. feel like it's been a challenge nowadays. I mean, since 2020, I think that's when it really kind of, you know, broke ground where it was like during the riots, then it turned into something else yeah. after that, you know, and right. just right. people again, they just started. And, I, and when you mentioned the security guards at Neiman Marcus, that could also you know, you know how some people are, they feel like, oh, they ain't gonna stop me. That right. could also pose as another Man. challenge. You know what, we go, <laughs> okay, well, they got this, then we gonna come with this. You yes. know? Right. I even remember seeing, they had U-Haul trucks. They This was this was strategic, some of these smashing. They had U-Haul trucks the <laughs> night before in these hotel parking lots and, and ready so that four o'clock in the morning comes, boom, they in the store. I mean, this yeah. was very strategic. Wow. Very. Yeah. And that's and that was when Michigan got towed up from Wacka all the way down to 900. Yep. That that I was remember. around that time. It was insane. I mean, they they had it so planned well. And I hate to give them that 
credit, but I mean, but to have to work. have you hauls the night before, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> hey. they, was, they was cleaning it out. They was like, we getting it, we taking everything, we taking wow. everything, you know. So on the so I mean, and again, it just the insurance, the insurance goes up, and then eventually the businesses are gonna just be like, it's not worth it, you know. I mean, yeah. that's what I'm afraid of. So. On the same subject of retail, but kind of flipping it from the smash and grabs, um, Macy's, mm -hmm. one, another one of our flagships, will be closing six stores. And that's kind of a big deal because, you know, over the years, Macy's has been closing stores. Well, they just mm -hmm. announced recently that they're going to be closing six more. And some of these are pretty major stores. What do you think is the state of retail in general? I mean, I've always said, and, you know, I love them all, but I've always said that I think <laughs> the dates of malls are going to go Bye-bye. Stop saying that, B. I'm just saying. No. Because I was just in Northbrook Court two weeks ago, right? And I think it was me and two other people in the entire mall. I know. That's pretty sad. I know. What do you think is happening with our malls? Well, I think the state of just, you know, with technology growing and becoming more um, for, user friendly for the consumer. I think that what retail is trying to do is accommodate us as best as possible. Mm -hmm. So at this point, when us dealing with all of these different variants and dealing with COVID, I mean, that's almost like the best thing to do. Not to say that I want the malls and the, the, the boutiques and things to go away, but I get it, you know, because you, we want to continue to advance. So being able to... <laughs> order something off Amazon and get it in two hours, <laughs> you know, that's almost unheard of. So people want convenience, you know, they want, they want it right away. I mean, like when you would order something, even though you knew you had to wait seven to 10 business days, you wanted it tomorrow. Right. So yep. I believe that it's going to just change for the better, you know, for just, you know, efficiency and, 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 um, and just a little bit more clean where it's almost too safer. And, you know, just again, if we're, we're dealing with another shutdown, you can go online and shop for whatever it is you need. Yeah. And it's like, you don't even have to leave your house. So yeah. with that being related to Macy's, I feel like Macy's has gotten a lot of competition from like Amazon and, you know, these big box companies that just came from out of nowhere and shut the game down. Mm -hmm. So you have mm -hmm. to think about it. Macy's is like, I love Macy's and Marshall Fields, but that's like way back when, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ryan. I'm so sorry. Ryan, let me let you know. I am stuck. I'm stuck in the old ways. I still love everybody going to the mall. I still like doing lunch at the food court. Now we all right. Here. I still write checks. Yes, the food court, get in the yeah, Cinnabon, like, no. <laughs> like, I meant, but you're so right. I remember back in the day, there was a pair of shoes that I wanted, and I'm like, dang, I gotta wait seven to ten business days <laughs> yeah. to get these shoes, where now you see them online or Amazon, and you're getting it like that. Come it's on, hard to play. later on, you can wear them at night. <laughs> You can wear them that Literally. night, right after you order them. <laughs> Literally, so it's just it's crazy, but I think you're I think you're right. I think with COVID plus everything that's going on with smash and grabs, I think companies now are like, if we're not trying to go out of business, we got to figure out a different direction. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. online may be the safest. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, and like I said, and with technology advancing, that that's the way that things are kind of curving, you know. So it's about efficiency and just you know quick and safe too and like I said it's clean you know yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah I like a nice field trip to the mall and to different shops don't get me wrong mm -hmm. but the whole ordering online it, it's sometimes the convenience but sometimes it's not because yeah. I'm not one of those girls that have like a regular body I might be too big up top too small up to the bottom you know what I mean so yeah I can't just buy a top that mm -hmm. I see online I gotta try that boy on first yeah and then if I order yeah. it online it's not fitting up in here. Mm -hmm. And yep. then I gotta take it back. And then that's just too yes. much of a hassle. It's a nice roll. So I'm like, it is a nice just roll. go to the store and get this off the hanger <laughs> right now and wear it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yep. oh, yeah. I, no, I you don't know, know what you mean. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> but you know what? I've, I've, I've learned in the last year or so that has really 
put a big presence out here is um, that vendor world. I'm telling yes. you, it ain't nothing mm. like these vendors and these pop-ups yes. and mm -hmm. having these small businesses, you know, to come out. And I mean, here at the gallery, we always support our vendors. We've been rocking with the vendors the last two years and they absolutely love coming out and being sometimes on a different side of town or, you know, just mm -hmm. being in a different element around different culture and being able to introduce their product and, and meet and, and, um, you know, build clientele and, you know, yeah. so the, I support the vendors. I'm a huge vendor supporter, you know, yeah. so and is so yeah, mm -hmm. here at iHeart uh, Radio, we do a lot mm -hmm. with different Black-owned businesses, brilliantly mm -hmm. Black-owned businesses. We support yeah. them. Mm -hmm. We advertise them every week. So, yeah, I, I know all about that, too. That's a good look. But, Charmaine, yes. thank you so much for being mm -hmm. on the Real thank Dust Thank you. <laughs> the Dicks the Gritty Podcast. Yes. yes. Thank Our you first so guest much. of 2022. First yes. guest? No way. Of 2022, way. yeah. <laughs> We Thank love you so having cool. you. And uh, mm -hmm. I got to get by three, four, five art gallery real soon. You do, sweetheart. absolutely. Anytime. Yes. Anytime. We're going to come through. Yes. We'll come yes. through. But thank you again yes, thank you. for your time. And Ryan, tell them where they Ryan, come thank you. It was so nice to meet you, Ryan. It was nice to meet you. I loved it. And even when we were emailing, I was like, Beyonce, I love her energy. Like her energy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah. you guys can check us out on YouTube or the iHeartRadio app or Instagram at We'll Just Agree to Disagree. I am Ryan Media Lee. Well, I'm Ryan Lee, but you can follow me at Ryan Media Lee. And B, where can they follow you at? Of course, at Beyonce Fox. The first episode of 2022. We are back. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.